Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here, and here's your latest housing market update. So after six consecutive months of decreases in pending home sales across the United States, uh, pendings actually increased last month. This actually caught me by surprise because I was anticipating that pending home sales were going to be decreasing given the fact that mortgage rates have been increasing greatly. And this is after the U.S. Census Bureau's announcement last week. They reported that contracts signed for newly built uh, single-family houses actually increased in May as well. So with that said, I'm going to dive into this report here regarding pending home sales across the United States. This was just announced this morning from the National Association of Realtors. Uh, so if you guys get any value of today's video, of course, please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. And of course, consider subscribing. I post the latest housing market trends so you guys can make more informed decisions about whether you should buy or sell a house. Okay, so that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the video here. This was posted on the 27th of June, which is today. It says pending home sales edge higher by 0.7% in May. And so this small increase a month over month is after six months of a decline in their pending home sale index, according to the National Association of Realtors. And by the way, they have what's called a pending home sale index or their PHSI. This of course is based on a contract signed between a home seller and a home buyer for existing houses. These are not for new houses. These are only for a resale on properties. So that index actually increased by 0.7% in May. However, though, compared to one year ago, uh, contracts signed actually decreased by 13.6%. Okay, so here's the actual report uh, from the National Association of Realtors. So they basically show uh, the index over the past 12 months, but they also give the average uh, index, again, for pending home sales for 2021 uh, through 2019. So as you can see here, the index uh, increased to 99.9. That's a 0.7% increase from the previous month, which of course was April, but it decreased by almost 14% uh, from May, 2021. And ever since November of 2021, their index has been declining, meaning uh, we're, they were seeing less contracts signed uh, between a home buyer and home seller for six consecutive months. However, this is the first increase we've seen uh, since uh, October of 2021. So one thing I wanna mention regarding this is that, uh, yes, it did increase by a very small amount compared to the previous month, but the levels right now at 99.9 .9 is far lower than the average uh, from 2019 to 2021. So the average in 2019, obviously pre-COVID, was uh, just under 106, now we're at 100 basically. Also 2020 and 2021, we we're at levels far higher than we're at right now. So of course, I'm kind of scratching my head regarding why we're seeing an increase in contracts signed in May, given the fact that mortgage rates increased greatly uh, ever since January of this year. Um, one theory I do have is that we're seeing more um, housing supply. In other words, we're seeing more houses being listed for sale, and that's giving more home buyers more options uh, of what to buy out there. So potentially we're seeing an increase in pendings because we're seeing an increase in housing supply. That's just one theory I came up with uh, regarding why we're seeing an increase in contracts signed uh, for May. But I would love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think? Comment below. One thing I also noticed when I was looking at this report here is that there's big differences depending on where you live or depending on the uh, region, right? Uh, so have a look at this. They break us down by the Northeast, the Midwest, the South and the West, just like they do for um, existing home sales and home prices. So again, for pending home sales in the Northeast, compared to the previous month, pending home sales actually increased by 15.4%, whereas in the Midwest and the South was more or less flat. However, in the West, it decreased by 5%. So some very big differences depending on the location. It just goes to show that every housing market's different, right? Also compared to one year ago, we also saw the biggest declines also in the West uh, by uh, almost down by 20% uh, compared to one year ago. The South decreasing by almost 14%. Uh, the Northeast declining by 11.9%, which is pretty uh, interesting to see that uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, uh, they declined by 12%, but compared to one month ago, a big increase. Kind of scratching my head regarding that as well. So going back to support from the National Association of Realtors, their chief economist, Lawrence Yoon, had this to say. Despite the small gain in pending sales from the prior month, the housing market is clearly undergoing a transition. I couldn't agree with him more regarding this because uh, there are some strong signs that home buying demand is decreasing this year, even though pending home sales increased slightly last month. And also we saw an increase in contract signs for newly built single family houses last month. 
And as Lawrence Yu noted here, a contract signings are down sizably from a year ago because of much higher mortgage rates. So let me give you an update regarding mortgage rates right now. So as of Friday, the average 30-year fix, according to the Mortgage News Daily, is 5.85%. That's up 2.65 percentage points from one year ago when rates were only 3.20%. And by the way, at the time of this video, they have not updated um, average mortgage rate at the time of this video, which is the 27th. However, Investopedia has. So as of today, average 30-year fixed rate mortgages is at 5.88% for people who have excellent credit. And meanwhile, the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note is sitting at 3.211%, and that has been increasing ever since Thursday of last week. And because mortgage rates have been increasing so much ever since really uh, January of this year, and basically rates have basically doubled since August of 2021. So in August 2021, the average 30-year fix was 2.75%. Now we're almost at 6%. And according to the National Association of Realtors, for the median home price right now, which is approximately $400,000, with a 10% down payment, the monthly mortgage payment has increased by about $800 per month since the beginning of this year, as mortgage rates have climbed 2.5 percentage points. And this, of course, is one of the main drivers of why um, home buying demand has been decreasing this year. So Lawrence Yoon went on to say the following here. Trying to balance the housing market by choking off demand via higher mortgage rates is damaging to consumers. The better way to balance out this housing market is through increased supply. So obviously, if we want to see a more balanced real estate market, we need supply to increase and demand to decrease as well. Uh, that would obviously cause a more balanced real estate market. However, though, this is easier said than done because I believe that some home sellers are looking to sell in order to capitalize on these high home prices, whereas others, such as myself, are not willing to give up uh, their mortgage rates of less than 3%. So in regards to um, housing supply, let me give you the updated numbers uh, from Redfin. Uh, let's have a look first at new listings. So this black line right here is for 2022, the orange line is 2021, and the blue line here is 2019. So levels we have right now for new listings, uh, a new listing of course is when a home seller lists their house for sale. The total number of new listings, we're still down 2.2% uh, compared to 2021 at this time. So in other words, on average across the United States, we're not seeing this giant increase in new listings just yet. Of course, every housing market's different, right? Some markets like uh, Boise, Idaho, and Yuba City, California, for example, are seeing giant increases in new listings right now. In regards to the total number of active listings in the United States right now, Redfin, of course, reported that we saw a decrease of active listings to start the year uh, down 20.25% uh, compared to uh, January uh, 2021. However, though, as I've been important to you guys, uh, the uh, difference between 2021 and 2022 has been narrowing. So we started the year at down 20%, but now we're only down 4.71%. So obviously this is a step in the right direction. We definitely want to see more housing supply in order to uh, balance out this housing market. Uh, but when we look at the total number of houses for sale uh, this year, uh, we're at basically 681,000 houses. At uh, this time last year, we're at 715,000. But at this time last year, we were down 27.17% compared to 2020. And on top of that, in 2020 at this time, we were down almost 19% compared to 2019. So in 2019, uh, at this time, we had approximately 1.2 million houses for sale, and now we only have 681,000. Therefore, even though we're moving in the right direction, we still have a long ways to go in order to have a more balanced real estate market. And by the way, according to the National Association of Realtors, uh, this pending home sale index is a leading indicator of our housing sector uh, based on pending sales of existing houses. A sale is listed as pending when the contract has been signed, but the transaction or the home sale has not yet closed. However, the sale usually is finalized within one or two months of contract signed. So please leave me a comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value out of today's video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Hope you guys have an awesome day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.